All right, hello everyone. My name is Sergeant Joshua McLean. I'm part of the 103rd Indiana. Uh, we have been going after a lot of those Confederate troops, General John Hunt Morgan's men, and uh, well, not surprising, in the Army we've got a lot of time to kill. So, if you don't mind me, I'm just going to go ahead and have myself some good old hardtack. Hello there. Uh, hope you're all doing well today. Hoping we'll have a Union victory too. And of course, if you have any uh, questions or comments, um, feel free to let me know. Let's see here. Of course, good old hardtack. Um, well, as you can imagine, it's, uh, it's a little hard sometimes. Uh, in fact, this is this bread is from uh, 1862. Wow, 1862. Wonderful. Fortunately, I've got some coffee going here. Well, good morning to you as well. Well, as I said, I've got a good old hardtack right here. <laughs> um, I've got, fortunately, uh, thank the Lord, I've got some coffee right here, so I'm going to go ahead and dip that in a little bit. What we do sometimes is break it apart and put it in, because it could be a little, a little hard. Um, we get our rations of, um, of hardtack, salt pork, there are other foods too, like beans or so on. Of course, for those, what they'll oftentimes do, they'll have, um, Kind of put out a rubber mat sometimes and kind of put several pounds worth and then they'll divide it amongst the, the rest of the company so oh boy <laughs> that's all right though yes indeed hello everyone my name is Sergeant joshua mclean i am part of the 103rd indiana regiment and uh well for now i'm stationed here i've got a lot of time to kill um so we're giving orders to move on so if you have any questions, I'm just here chewing on my hardtack. Mmm, wonderful. Uh, well, we'll see how things go. Uh, for those of you joining us, I'm drinking some coffee too. Not the best, but it'll do. Sergeant Hinton over there, he's, I know he's, I think he's trying to brew some coffee himself, but that'll be a little while. My orders? <laughs> well, I don't know if you folks have been reading the papers, but we've had about 2,000 Confederates coming through Indiana. So me and the rest of the men I'm with are part of special militia. We've got about, uh, well, because of our dear governor, um, Governor Morton. We have 2,000 men coming through Indiana? No problem. Uh, the governor wanted to get about... Oh, 65,000 men to go chase him out. So, we outnumber the enemy. A lot of us are already going to chase after him. Uh, we just came here to the town of DuPont here in southern Indiana. And uh, it's a nice little town. Unfortunately, I had some trouble here. Uh, storehouse got burned down and so on. So, for now, to answer your question, long story short, uh, for some reason, we've been getting orders to stay put until we resume the chase to go after the Confederates. And we, we think they're going eastward, possibly go towards Ohio. And I appreciate you folks joining me here today. Um, and as I said, if have you have any questions, right now I'm with the uh, Judge Porter's house here. It's, it's, it's a nice house. I'm, I'm pretty grateful <laughs> that I've got a nice place here. Oh, if you don't mind me, pretty hot July day. That's all right. A good old Kepi hat. If I have to be honest, when, well, since you folks are here too, I might just talk a little bit about myself. <laughs> um, my name is Sergeant Joshua McLean. Uh, one thing you know about me is I don't exactly like these hats, but they do come in handy. See some apples or something, put them inside, save them for later. Um, who makes the best coffee in the regiment? Golly, well, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy my coffee, as a lot of soldiers do, but, uh, oh golly, um, definitely not Sergeant Hinton. You know, maybe Sergeant Stoltz. He's a pretty knowledgeable man, and 
seems like he knows quite a lot. It's a, I, I'm very honored to be well with a lot of good men, like Sergeant Stoltz, with, well, sort of Sergeant Hinton and some of the others. Um, as I said, I'm with the 103rd Indiana Re uh, Regiment right now. Uh, I used to be part of the, the 44th Indiana. Um, served last year until I got wounded. And, and uh, actually, I don't know if my wife's gal who it looks like my wife's busy. But I've got some excited news to share with you. In fact, I just want to share it to the world. I just got married. Oh, gosh, uh, just uh, a month or so ago. Uh, May. <laughs> of course, today's July 13th, so it hasn't been too long. Oh, boy, Anne's really getting work. She's a... Uh... My wife followed me. <laughs> uh, she's a she's an army laundress. And uh, so... Uh... Any soldiers around here who have any clothes we need mending or cleaning or things like that? Well, my wife takes care of that. And she gets pretty good money for it, too. Um, I mean, if any of you are married to, uh, to a soldier, or you're the mother of a soldier, anyone out there like that, well, that's one line of work you might be considering. Um, it's not bad work, actually. I don't know if any of you were part of the same regiment, but uh, if you need any services from my wife... <laughs> I hear, let's see, my wife is a good laundress. Is she good at removing all, oh, I'm afraid I didn't get the, the last of your uh, your comment there. Um, how do I feel? Well, I'll say this much. I didn't get quite get your full comment, uh, but I will say that my wife is very good at what she does. Um, she she does all sorts of things. She, she mends clothing. Uh, she washes the clothes. Uh, she gets boiling water going. Um, she's uh, not alone either. Um, for for each, oh, um, company, I believe, there's there's going to be, uh, for, for every about 100 men, there's going to be maybe three or four laundresses. Um, so she, she does good hard work. <laughs> uh, let me get some of your questions here, since uh, I appreciate you folks. You folks are good to talk to you, and I appreciate some of your folks here. What type of food do I eat? Well, uh, especially for those who are just joining us, uh, good old hardtack. It's a uh, army bread, if you can call it that. We call it uh, <clears throat> worm castle. You uh, very uh, very hard. It's water, flour, salt, and really not much more than that. But fortunately, you can break it apart and dip it in your coffee and just make sure that you know there aren't any uh, worms or maggots or weevils inside. And soften it up a little bit. Not too terrible. We also get salt pork and other things. If we find any apples, I can, if I find an apple, I'm going to put it in my cuppy hat. <laughs> Are there really Confederate soldiers in Indiana? Afraid so. About 2,000, 2,500 of them. Don't know exact numbers. Um, of course, there's, uh, I'm sure you folks have been reading the papers. There was a lot going on in this country. Just a week or so ago, uh, Gettysburg, uh, that, that small town over yonder, Big Union victory. Lee was defeated. That's good news for us. And not only that, um, uh, good old Grant, he, he finally secured Vicksburg. And that is wonderful news. And on July 4th, nonetheless. Um, and that's, that's one of the major goals that we've had in this, in this war. One of our main goals was to cut the Confederacy in half. Because once we control that Mississippi River, uh, that really separates the Confederacy. So, not surprising. That's making a lot of Confederates... Some of them, at least, uh, pretty antsy to to um, to get some wins under the belt. So there's a rogue general by the name of General John Hunt Morgan, who took his men up through Indiana. So far, he's been keeping throughout southern Indiana, but he's been, uh, oh gosh, uh, he's been burning things, uh, causing all sorts of mayhem. Um, but we're after him. Now let me get to some of your questions here. How do how do I feel about my wife being in the camp with the other fellows? That is an excellent question. Um, well, I um, don't play as many card games as uh, as I did as I did before when I had previously served in the war. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's all right. I'm, I'm I'm very grateful, Anne, that you are part of this army. That yes, <laughs> we we do love each other very much. Um, some of the other soldiers can be a bit crude, um, Sergeant Hinton. Sometimes uh, 
Well, he's not the smartest fella, and sometimes he says things which are a little naughty for being in the presence of my wife, so... But overall, I do appreciate my wife being nearby. It's, it's more than a lot of folks can say about this war going on. Um, I mean, I know for my wife, it's sad to say, last year, about the time I first served, um, her brother uh, got killed in combat, so... I'm sure that if, she, I mean, don't tell her, don't tell her I told you this, but I know my wife, it was one of her main regrets that she couldn't be with, with her, with her brother after he left for, for war. And he still got, she still got a brother out there. But anyway, let me get to some questions here. Excellent questions, everyone. Do you and Anna ever go to the theater or do anything while courting? Oh boy, we we're planning to, um, golly, uh. Of course, I should mention how we met. <laughs> uh, after uh, I did serve at Shiloh, that seems like a long time ago, but I was uh, wounded right here in the left shoulder and uh, hurt real bad. But I got transferred to a, a hospital in Indianapolis. Uh, my lovely wife, Anne, was part of the sanitary commission. And uh, folks who are part of that, they're, they're good folks. Um, they, there's women who go out and and see if they can help soldiers in need. And that's how we met. And she and I started writing letters together and started learning, uh, started to, yes, write wonderful letters to each other. Uh, and we married. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't had time yet to, to go see one of the plays. Uh, I know my wife, she's a big fan of that, uh, that Shakespeare fella. Um, and we're hoping to go see, well, if we're really lucky, maybe we'll get to see Edwin Booth perform one of his famous roles, or I guess one of the other Booth brothers would be fine, too. <laughs> All right. What do I miss most about home while I'm in the Army? That's an excellent question. Um, and like I said, well, I'm a lucky fella. Um, I have my wife here, and that's something that a lot of soldiers don't have. Um, so what I fear, because I live in Fort Wayne now. I've lived in Fort Wayne for most of my life. The quiet. I know that's silly to say, but I miss, I miss the quiet, and I I know I'm that's silly to complain about when I'm sitting here doing nothing. But I never really appreciated, um, even in Fort Wayne, uh, how nice a quiet afternoon might be compared to how loud some of the combat might be, and uh, some of the cannon fire that I encountered, or even even just the sound of the drills and the firing over and over again. Well, it keeps with me. Um, anyway, I'm looking forward to this war. And when, once I'm done with chasing Morgan, I'm hoping to go back. Uh, uh, my wife, has a her family has a store in Indianapolis. I'm hoping to be part of that. What battles have I been part of? Well, I was uh, originally part of the 44th Indiana um, Company C. And, uh, gosh, it seems like a long time ago. Because we went down to, uh, to Tennessee... Uh, and we took over Forts Donaldson and Henry. And by golly, I mean, I, I think the we had a lot of success at those two. Um, the first fort we came to, fortunately, is by the river, the Tennessee River. And, uh, you know, we the Union Army, we've got a wonderful Navy. And so we actually had a lot of our ironclads come up and shoot at the, uh, the Confederate fort. And we were actually able to overtake that pretty good. Um, and, uh, of course, right after that, to take control of the, the Cumberland River, uh, well, we went to the other fort there, um, Fort Donaldson, part, or Henry, pardon me, and, um, well, we had some good luck there, too. In fact, the, the fellow was in charge, uh, the Confederate fellow who was in charge, uh, it didn't take too long before he, uh, he left and, um, ran away so he wouldn't be captured, leaving all of his troops. He left all of his troops there, and so we captured his troops there. Um, anyway, I got a little too excited, I guess one could say. Uh, after we had those two successes at Fort Donaldson and Fort Henry, boy, I was feeling mighty proud. We were doing a lot better than a lot of the battles going on, on the East Coast. Um, and I did serve at Shiloh, which was pretty soon after that, and that took us by surprise. Indeed, it was a surprise attack, um, and it was after a couple days rain, and I do mean 
heavy, heavy rain. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that the Confederates planned to attack us earlier and they were delayed because of the rain. Um, it took us by surprise. And all, all that, that pride I had of defeating the two forts kind of vanished pretty quickly when I knew that I was in the midst of, of combat. I was a private back then, but um, it was something that the Confederate plan was to spook us and get us to another area, Owl Creek, uh, an area of the land where they could finish off pretty quick. Um, fortunately, we were able to go a little bit northeast, and uh, we had some reinforcements, and we were able to, to fend them off, thankfully. Of course, uh, with all that mud, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a pleasurable experience. Um, my own brother, James, uh, well, he was shot and killed at Shiloh, and... Um, but they got injured here. Anyway, I should get to uh, your questions. I've been rambling, haven't I? All right, and wonderful questions, everyone. Let's see. Question here, how do Indiana regiments travel to join up with various corps? Uh, is it by train, riverboats, or do they typically march? Oh, excellent question. Um, sometimes by train, um, and sometimes, uh, if I mean, those things can go about 20 miles per hour. Uh, not always, though. Um, for my regiment right now, we're, we're marching, um, which is... Um, and, and sometimes it, it could vary when we march. Um, I mean, trains, I said, could go about 20 miles per hour, but marching, that could take maybe 20 miles a day, give or take, maybe less miles, maybe more miles. And that, that can, that can get pretty up there, uh, especially with wearing wool. It's a hot July day. And boy, don't want to know it. <laughs> maybe I'm wearing that block of wool, wool on top of my head here. Um, but, uh, excellent questions. Um, what type of guns do you Union boys use? <laughs> Excellent question. Well, um, pretty typical type of firearm is going to be the, uh, the U.S. Springfield. Uh, this is a 61 model right here. And it's a good dependable piece. Um, now, you fire it about maybe three times a minute. Maybe two times if you're really, really quick. Uh, but you do have to be pretty, uh, pretty quick on the beat there. Now, the type of bullet that we use for the gun, it's called a mini bullet, or mini bullet, it's a French term, uh, so I might not be pronouncing it correctly, uh, but it's 58 caliber, because once a bullet goes out of this, and it comes out, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a bit of lead, it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to be accurate for several hundred yards, and it's going to be going at a speed of something like eight, nine hundred feet in a, in a second, um, so, does a lot of damage, I must say. Uh, excellent questions. And uh, ah, new question. On your downtown white type of things, do you do at the camps to entertain yourself? Excellent question. Well, all sorts. Of course, uh, sometimes it takes a while to get through the hard tack. And uh, sometimes we do have quite a lot of time to kill. Um, no, we write letters. A lot of us. Um, like I said, I'm a bit lucky because I've got my... Uh, well, she's busy with being the laundress right now. Um, uh, I've got my wife doing laundry, but um, lots of folks aren't with their loved ones. And so uh, they write a lot. And uh, me too, i got to get on that. I need to write a letter to my own mom and pa. Something I need to do. But also, more than that, there's a little card games. Um, just don't cheat. Um, there's a... Well, sometimes even good old baseball if you have the right material for it. Um, there's all sorts of things, really. Uh, what kind of trains do you have? Ah, excellent. Uh, excellent question. So what type of trains? Now, I'm a, I'm a first sergeant. So uh, that's one of my tasks now uh, is, to, is to drill and teach a lot of the basics to a lot of soldiers. Um, and there's a couple different. The, the sort of... Um, oftentimes, I could... Let me back up a little here. We divide our, our army in different little segments. Um, the small segment of an army is called a squad, and that could be about 12 men, give or take. And uh, after that, we've got a platoon, and that could be a, like around 50 people. And then after that, we've got, uh, if you have like, say, two platoons, um, you have a, a, a company, and that's 100 people. And then... Once you have uh, 10 companies, you have a full regiment. So when I say uh, I'm part of the 103rd Regiment, you probably have around 1,000 soldiers. 
maybe a little less than that. And so, but as, since I'm a first sergeant, um, I'll, it won't be the, we do sometimes do drilling. Uh, uh, sometimes we do uh, drilling according to, there, there's a whole bunch of us, or maybe some of us, or maybe if it's just the, just the, uh, the smaller amount, the, the squad. And I, I do a lot of the drilling by squad. So sometimes I'll have about 12 people in front of me. And I'll tell them some of the basics. Order arms. You have to know where to stamp the attention. You want your feet at a V-shape. Heels together. Toes apart. Rifle's going to be at your right side. Um, we also got... Try to get so you can see. <laughs> we got a little something called shoulder arms position. There you go. And uh, you'll have that rifle uh, kind of to your right side with your thumb on top, pointer finger and bottom. And if need be, of course, drilling, we also talk about how to load and fire your rifle, uh, which we teach in, in nine steps. And uh, But again, if any of you remember, I mentioned that we can load and fire these things in about 30 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. So go to that very quickly. You, you've got your uh, leather straps that's going to contain your gunpowder, ammunition, bullet, etc. You take out a paper round, contains your gunpowder and your bullet, rip it with your teeth, now, granted, I'd be standing up when I'm doing this, <laughs> but you can use your imagination. So I rip it, pour it down the muzzle. I'd have a very long um, rod to push all that way down. And then I do something called priming the rifle. And we got the hammer here. Under the hammer, you have to add a little cap. Um, once you bring that back all the way, you squeeze the trigger. The hammer comes down on that cap. And that cap contains uh, some... Fulminate of mercury. It, basically, it's going to make a spark, boom, blow the perhaps outer, bullet goes out. <laughs> anyway, once again, I'm rambling, so let me see if uh, what question, other questions you have. Why am I fighting this war? That is an excellent question. Well, I want to preserve the Union, and I want to see the slaves freed. Um, now, uh, granted, uh, even in my own regiment, not everyone's as much as an abolitionist as I am. And for those who don't know, an abolitionist is someone who wants to see slavery end. Um, but I, I certainly believe that slavery is what brought us to this war. Uh, it got it started, and by golly, especially after Lincoln gave that Emancipation Proclamation. I mean, that, it, it, I mean, it certainly was the start of the war, uh, but even if it weren't the, like, the primary objective of the war, it certainly is now, now that Lincoln has really made it clear uh, for everyone. Um, Hint to all those European powers who were thinking about possibly uh, helping the South. But um, excellent questions. Although I should mention that, um, of course, in the in the short term, I want to defend Indiana against General Morgan. Uh, Indiana's pretty pretty lucky compared to other states. Um, we we have had a high amount of people, a high, high amount of Hoosiers, go out and join the war effort, and I want to defend my state much as I can. All right. Another question, how old do I have to be to enlist? Is anyone ever cheat the system and, and join younger? Gasp. Well, most everyone, mostly, uh, for the most part, is, is of age, which is 18 years old. Um, there are some requirements. you got to be 18 years old. Do You have to have uh, that four teeth, two on top, two on bottom. you got to overlap, because if you remember, when you load that rifle there, you cape that paper cartridge, you rip it with your teeth, Pour it down the muzzle, so you need those teeth to line up. And I believe you have to have five fingers spread across your two hands. It's been a little while since I've had the medical examination. Um, of course, well, I do hear tell that some folks would take a sheet of paper, write the number 18 on it, put it under their shoe, and or in their shoe, and step on it. That way, if someone asks them if they're over 18, there you are. <laughs> All right. Another question, have I ever had someone's gun explode from too much powder in it? That is an excellent question. Not in my unit. <laughs> because I tried to instill that over and over and over and over again. Uh, the need to be safe with these guns. Um, I should mention, too, the necessity for, for cleaning these pieces. And I'm sad to say, there's a, I do hear tell that there's a lot of Union troops who don't clean as much as they should. Because um, the more you fire, if you're... For those, uh, for those who've been listening, or even for those who've been joining us, uh, loading this piece here, that's about 65 grams of gunpowder per shot. Um, and granted, you explode some of that, but the more you go through, the more that gunpowder is going to build up inside that barrel. So that's going to be corrosive, um, but of course it's also going to build up too, um, which is why we, after a battle, we have to clean these things. 
get some hot water, you know, uh, basically give it a bath. Uh, we have to get all the water to flush it out, basically, and then oil it up. Um, because if you don't do that, you make a good point. The gun could explode if you put too much. Um, now, in my experience, because in my younger days, I, I am ashamed to say that I didn't clean my gun as often as I should. It didn't explode on me. But what happened is uh, uh, there is, uh, they're starting, especially since I've been firing several times, the more gunpowder that's built in, up inside there, well, uh, when you put a cap on and you try to ignite it, that cap, that spark might not actually go through. Um, so, you, so you might have to uh, be very carefully see if you can use that, um, um, put, uh, take the old cap out, put a brand new cap on, and try it again. But of course, that's something we want to avoid. Uh, have you seen more men perish from injury, battle, or disease? Well, in my experience, uh, now overall, absolutely by far it's it's disease that people die from by far um and uh, that's that's a scary thing to say because if you're listening to me talk about the, the 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 piece there the rifle that's 58 caliber bullet uh, and we got cannon fire and we got bayonets that we use to to impale folks um and uh it's a very deadly war it's a necessary war, in my opinion, but a very deadly one. Um, and so it's scary, but true to think about that there's all sorts of disease going on. Um, uh, there's there's consumption, there's yellow fever, there's this and that, um, the measles and so on. It's 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 overwhelming. Um, now, me personally, being in the line, I think me personally, I've seen more people die in combat compared to when they died from disease, but that's mostly because, uh, well, I have uh, now I have seen people dying. They haven't reached that final state yet. Um, but when I'm in battle, there's no sense of privacy. Every every soldier is shoulder to shoulder to shoulder to shoulder. There's really no gaps amongst you. So um, when there are men who fall down and die at a line, that's my, my responsibility to keep that line together, nonetheless. Um, well, I noticed it. Excellent questions, everyone. Um, have you ever heard of women disguising themselves as men and joining the army? Yes. Yes, I have. Because <laughs> um, uh, women, one way or the other, well, I'll say this much first. Women are involved in so many ways in this conflict. Uh, of course, uh, hello, Anne. Yeah, she's still busy. That's all right. She's doing very important work. Uh, some folks, like my darling wife there, uh, well, she's doing laundry for the army, a very necessary service. Um, of course, with, uh, well, with men and men like us in Indiana, 65,000 men go to fight the enemy. That's a lot of men who are leaving. So guess who are doing all the women, uh, oh, pardon me, guess who are doing all the work back home? It's the women. Um, they're doing the farm work. They're doing, helping out with businesses. Um, some are even spies on different sides of this conflict. And yes, some of them are valiant enough to dress up as men. Um, and, uh, some of them have been found. And from what I feared, I heard, uh, that's actually something that happens sometimes on, on both sides of this war. Um, now granted, I've heard tale that sometimes they're, they're found out when, um, when they're injured and they're discovered that it's a woman. Um, um, but, uh, apparently the, the ones who did dress up as men to be soldiers, Apparently they did well enough to not even be caught until they got injured, which is, which is quite something. And of course, uh, so far as I'm aware, um, I'm trying to think. I can't remember offhand the name. I'm thinking of one lady in particular who um, dressed up as a man to be a soldier. Was a sol is a soldier. Uh, apparently she got caught being a woman. Got kicked out. They didn't want to impose a physical penalty on a woman, and so she just joined right back in. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of tenacity there uh, in a lot of folks. Uh, anyway, excellent question. Have you, let's see here. What was your favorite commanding general of the Union Army? Oh, let me... Excellent question. Grant. Grant, 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 Grant. Did I mention Grant? Uh, uh, it's... Well, let me rewind a little bit. Or let me go back a bit and talk about... How we're going to defeat the Confederates in this war. 
General Winfield Scott, and he's a man I admire too. Uh, unfortunately, he's a little too old to really be part of this current conflict, but he uh, more than he could. But he certainly gave uh, uh, several great ideas, uh, and those are three parts. One of them, as I mentioned earlier, which I, I'm proud to have taken part of, is to cut the, the Confederacy in half by taking control of the Mississippi River. And Grant was a big, big part of that. Uh, in fact, he got promoted from Brigadier General uh, to, I think, a Major General. Um, yeah, Brigadier to Major General um, after his success at, at Forts Henry and, and Donaldson. Um, so he was a Major General by the time he, he got to Shiloh. Um, that was a great success. Meanwhile, back over east... Well, okay, so part one is cutting, cutting in half. Part two is also the Anaconda Plan, as Winfield Scott told it, which was to um, take a lot of our ironclads, our ships, and to make a blockade, cut off the Confederacy, um, especially from trading with other countries. So a lot of those ships would arrive on the harbor and take over. And the third point of uh, that's going to help us win this war is taking Richmond. And so far, it's been absolutely frustrating just reading the Harper's Week, reading the newspaper and hearing about all the generals that we've been going through. Uh, we've, we've gone through, uh, I mean, uh, Burnside, Hooker, uh, McClellan, and don't get me wrong, McClellan's, a, I'm sure he's a good man, and I, I hear he is wonderful, absolutely wonderful at getting troops ready and primed and ready for combat, but he just doesn't have it in him to, to finish this conflict. Apparently, while he was over uh, during one of his uh, attempts to take Richmond, he got pretty close. Apparently, he got within, oh, something like 20 miles. Uh, apparently, some of his men, could they, they thought they heard church bells from Richmond itself, the Confederate capital, and by golly. Um, anyway, long story short, McClellan, um, fortunately, I, I hope we're really moving past him. Hopefully, he doesn't come back either militarily or politically, um, but, uh, but Grant, now that's a man, especially after capturing Vicksburg on July the 4th, just, just, a oh gosh, that was just about a week or so ago, he did it, he secured the Mississippi River, he cut the Confederacy in half, and that fella Grant, and who I'm, I'm happy to be one of the, one of the many regiments who is <laughs> down the line under him, uh, I think he has promise, um, let's see, all right, let me get back to your own questions here, I do apologize, I, I am known, known, isn't that right, Sergeant Hinton, that I talk a lot. I, he says, yes, I, I do tend to ramble. <laughs> so let me get back to some of your questions here. Are there any Confederate generals you hope to never encounter in battle? <sighs> well, well, Lee, certainly. Uh, he's been really in charge of the Confederacy for, um, I think, about a year. Um, and boy, uh, he has shown up, like, like I said, uh, McClellan and, and some of the others, he, he's he's very good at what he does. Um, I mean, like a lot of the folks in this war who came from West Point, by golly, uh, he's very good at maneuvering and uh, making guesses. Um, and, although, to be honest, for now, I mean, I'm no longer part of the 44th Indiana. Um, I've, I've, the, what I'm in right now is part of the 103rd Militiamen, so to speak. Um, we're sort of a temporary unit to go chase General Morgan out of Indiana. I don't know how long that's going to take. Could be short, could be long. And, you know, at first I was thinking, especially being a newlywed, that I've got to maybe put an end to fighting as a soldier after chasing Morgan out. But I don't know. I might join up with the rest of the Army again after that. I haven't decided... But there we go, rambling again. All right, next question. Uh, who do you favor in next year's presidential election? Oh, Lincoln by far. <laughs> uh, and I really hope that this war ends. Can you imagine for a crisis as big as, as this war going on? Can you imagine what... I mean, I'm surprised it hasn't ended by now. But it would be even worse if this were to continue on during an, an election year. Good grief. Um... So I really hope uh, that that Lincoln does well. Um, I don't know who his opponent might be at this point. Um, I, like I said, I 
I wouldn't be surprised. He's got such an ego if, if a McClellan or somebody like that tried to do it. But from the folks I've been talking to, we were talking, and I think a lot of us would vote for Lincoln when it comes down to it. And we'll see. Um, McClellan is a ninny. I agree. <laughs> do you have a cavalry unit as part of your regiment? Uh, excellent question. Yeah. Um, yes, we do, which is a little bit frustrating because we're we're mostly infantry, um, and so a lot of us are marching. So, um, but uh, we do have some cavalry. Um, and for the the those of you who aren't familiar, uh, cavalry, um, those are folks on horseback. And I'm a little bit jealous of the the cavalry men. In fact, a lot of soldiers are. Um, I seem to recall one soldier would refer to the the cavalry men as um, as oh uh, I think the term was vampires because they'd they'd come onto the battlefield after the uh, the infantrymen had done most of the work and then claimed the glory. Uh, because and I said I'm a little jealous. Now this piece here, it's a very long, tall piece. It takes a while to fire the Springfield. Now those uh, fellows on horseback, the cavalry, they've got breech loaders. There's there's um, a Sharps rifle. It's much shorter than what I have here. And instead of taking time to load from the top, those breech loaders are much quicker. Um, where that you'd open it by the breech. So uh, instead of loading by the top, you pop that open here. Um, it would actually open up here. You take that that paper round with the gunpowder and the bullet, put it in, snap shut, put the cap on, take aim and fire. And so for a lot of those sharp rifles, you can fire those about five times a minute compared to the three times a minute for this one here. Uh, that's good. And let me get back to some of the questions here. Let's see. Mc McClellan's grandparents come from my come from your hometown. Well, I mean, I shouldn't brag about that anymore. Well, like I said, he's not he's not a bad man. And McClellan, he did do some some good things. He was very good at organizing the troops and getting them ready for combat. When the war first started, a lot of the soldiers not ready for combat. And unfortunately, that's part of the reason why we weren't able to finish the war off immediately as soon as it happened. Um, but anyway, what kind of damage has General Morgan caused in Indiana? Excellent question. Uh... A lot. Fortunately for us, so far, he's just been keeping throughout the southern part of Indiana. Um, he is pretty quick, and I'm ashamed to say that he's uh, been able to outrun us a bit because he's a pretty tricky man to catch up to. Um, if I remember correctly, when he was coming up through Kentucky uh, to cross the Ohio River, I think he actually like sent um, some of his men up uh, as, as sort of a distraction. Uh, against some of the Union fellows who might be pursuing him. Then he crossed the Ohio River uh, and later met up with some of his men, if I remember correctly. Um, but for some of the towns he did come to. Um, Cordon. You know, he used to be our capital years and years ago. Um, Cordon, the... Uh, boy, they... they I mean, it, maybe battle, maybe skirmish, whatever you want to call it, but they, they defeated the Union men there pretty quick. Um, for the most... And there were some deaths there, of course. Um, for the most part... So far as I'm aware of, hopefully. I don't think Morgan's trying to kill too many women, children, civilians, things like that as he comes to her, which, which is fortunate. Um, but he is doing things. He's he's uh, like this town here of, of DuPont. He burned down the storehouse. He took and stole a lot of food. Um, some A lot of places in the Confederacy, they're um, not doing so good on, on food supplies. Um, so they like this town here, I heard they took about 2,000 ham hocks. Uh, they've got communication lines. Um, they've got a man in there. Uh, I've heard. I've heard they got a man by the name of um, uh, Ellsworth. Lightning Ellsworth is his nickname, because Mr. Ellsworth apparently was uh, fast as lightning. You know, was able to tap down um, uh, and send a very quick telegraph message, which would be lies, of course. He he is his men were very tricky. So anyway, we'll catch up to him soon. I'll get back to sooner questions here. Are the folks in the DuPont being kind to you? Any folks you don't care for? For the most part, the folks here in DuPont are being nice to me. Uh, absolutely, and to the rest of us. Um, which is interesting. DuPont is an extremely interesting town. Most everyone is extremely pro-union. Uh, of course, we're on the, the southern side of the state, so they have certain habits uh, that you might not see up 
where I'm from, up higher north in Indiana, um, but are kind of actually a little typical of, of habits of folks down south. Um, for example, uh, I, I think I saw, you know, while they're trying to get the horses that weren't stolen carried here or there in this town, because there were a lot of horses sto stolen. Um, but I think I saw some of the women and children ride horses in place to place. Um, that's a little more typical um, of, uh, of uh, some folks who live a little southward of us, and uh, even their accents too a little bit. Um, but entirely pro-union, except we were talking to about a gentleman by the name of, uh, of uh, Mordecai Johnston, who we suspect is a copperhead. Copperhead. A fellow who talks treason, in my opinion. And that's a fellow who, uh, well, wants the war to be over with. Depending on who you talk to, maybe or maybe not, some copperheads might be sympathetic to the South as well. Um, in fact, I um, don't know if he's around quite yet, but uh, there's a sergeant, also in the 103rd, Sergeant Stoltz, who uh, wrote a little something um, because... Uh, well, unfortunately, we were denied orders to arrest the, uh, this man, and I don't know why. Lincoln has made it for many places all over so that we can arrest someone without really giving a reason, which, in my opinion, is the correct course of action if they're talking treason. If you don't mind, let me just read uh, a brief little uh, message that uh, Sergeant Stoltz is planning on sending to uh, Mr. Mordecai. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson. Snake as thou art, thou uh, thou may have slithered so, so throw, uh, so through our grasp, yet beware, for the justice of the Lord is swift and unrepentant. It may be that thou shalt find the destruction in thee, even as thou celebrate the arrival of thy fondest hopes. Nor army, nor mortal haste, can yet acquit thy wicked heart, nor cleanse from the soul the stain of thy foul deeds. Despair, Judas, and seek no comfort in the auguries, for they do spell thy doom. So before we leave town, I think we're just going to give this little message to Mr. Johnson. Make sure he's not talking too much treason. Let's see. Excellent questions here. All right, let me see here. Wonderful. Well, I... These are some excellent, wonderful questions, everyone, and I do appreciate you all talking. Oh, you know, this coffee's not too bad. Fortunately, we do have some coffee here to get us through this war, which I much appreciate. <laughs> Let's see if uh, I need to work more on this uh, this hardtack here. It's it's well, it's it's food. I'll say that much. Um, I will say this much: being in the hundred and third. Oh boy, it's a, uh, it's an honor uh, to be part of the hundred third, especially with my wife. I, I think I appreciate a little bit more, um, or rather, I appreciate not being next to the, to the the mules. I've heard uh, a lot of soldiers in this war for, for good reason. A lot of the Union has been breeding mules to help out uh, with with this war, and apparently some of them are pretty hungry critters. I've heard. More than one soldier would have an apple in his cappy, as he should. And, of course, that mule comes on by and he's pretty hungry and eats part of his hat. So, something to keep out for. All right. And these are all excellent, excellent questions for everyone. This is really making my day because I wasn't, I was, ex well, I wasn't sure what to expect today. I was expecting we'd be going after the Confederates as soon as possible. So, the fact that I'm stuck here for the moment and having good, nice, friendly conversation with all of you. You know, it really means a lot to me. So from the bottom of my heart, I do thank you. And uh, I, if any of you have any other questions. Ah, here we are. Uh, have to go now? Nice to, oh, well, it's nice to visit with you. Uh, <laughs> stay safe. And I, I definitely will thank my wife. Uh, thank you for letting me know that I should thank my wife again because that is something I should never get tired of. Uh, uh, and, and, we have someone here who uh, says that she's grateful for the work that you do in this war. <laughs> oh, oh, I have a lovely wife. I, I do so hope that this war ends so I can spend some more time with her. Who does the cooking for the regiment? Excellent question. Um, of course, a lot of us do our own. Um, now, there are going to be a couple of, uh, of cooks as well um, per regiment or company. There's not going to be too many, but there are going to be some. And so they help with the meals sometimes. Oh, uh, there are going to be uh, 
I'm, I'm hoping to get some good food. In fact, uh, if you don't mind me indulging a bit, um, oh, if I, unless I put it down somewhere, ha, ah, there we are. I've got, uh, for those of you who've been joining me, I've had, fortunately, I've got several things here. Whoa. Several things here. Oh, there we are. I've been biding my time with. I actually have a list of things once I get back. Once this, uh, once I'm done with combat, and I'm able to return back with my wife and help manage that store there. Uh, well, we've got some good things. If any of you should uh, end up visiting us, uh, it'll be just uh, let's see here, 25 cents a dozen for eggs, which is fairly good price. Um, we promise maybe we'll give you some a discount if ever you visit us. Uh, the name is Joshua McLean, by the way. And uh, so if you ask around, I'm sure you can meet us sometime. We'll be in Indianapolis. Um, flour, $6 for a 25 barrel pound. Uh, if any of you are interested in pianos, we have a piano. Um, we have trouble selling it. It's about uh, $150. Uh, and we haven't sold it for quite some time. Uh, she or her family hasn't sold it for quite some time. So once this war over is over, if any of you want to come visit and... Uh, Maybe think about finally buying that piano and get it off our hands. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Excellent, excellent. And uh, and uh, as I know I've been a bit of a rambler, and I appreciate those who have been here today, I very much appreciate that you have been here. Uh, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, I know some of you can't stay, and I know some of you have left already. Uh, but again, uh, if there are any more questions or things that you would like to talk about, I'm all ears. Or if not, I think uh, Anne's a little bit busy over there, and uh, so I've been on. And she's not looking around. I was hoping to maybe practice, uh, you know, playing cards with some of the other soldiers. Uh, it's been a while since I've done that. Ah. <clears throat> uh. Uh, oh, nothing, Anne. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Where do the other soldiers in my regiment come from? All right. Very good question. Um, I'm from Fort Wayne myself. Um, and the, a lot of the other soldiers, you know, of course, uh, we, we kind of mustered, uh, especially from Indianapolis. Uh, I know a bunch of us met there before coming down here all the way down. Um, for the most part, I'm actually kind of surprised our unit has a little more diversity, so to speak. Um, but for the most part, a lot of regiments are going to be formed, you know, place by place by place, uh, especially with um, the the state militia that we have now, the on-the-moment Minutemen, form your own people right now to go chasing Morgan out. Um, so a lot of folks are coming from very similar locations. A town might gather all the men and go out from there. Um, there there were some other fellows, uh, oh golly, I didn't even talk around with the men more because <laughs> I forget where some of them came from. <laughs> Um, but we're all good Hoosiers. We're all hoping that this war is going to be over. And a lot of us do have a sense of pride. Um, even when this war first started, Indiana was sending out a high number of soldiers to go out after the, after the, uh, the Confederates. Um, and so that's something I'd be very proud of. Uh, guess I'll drink some more coffee here. These have been excellent questions, everyone. And, uh, well, I know we're all hoping to, uh, get this war over with, and who knows when we'll get the order to, to leave DuPont and join the chase. All right, well, I suppose if, um, any of you have any more questions, uh, otherwise I think I might, um, might sneak off to, uh, <clears throat> you know, and enjoy some gentlemen's games with the, the other soldiers. So if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to talk to you. And in the meantime, I'll just be whistling a tune. Um, <laughs> All right, everyone. All right. Well, I think, all right, I think I, it has been a pleasure talking to all of you. 
so many of you had so many wonderful questions. And uh, looks like my wife, wife is really busy, and some of the men are starting to gather for their card games. And so I might go and, oh my golly, Sergeant Hinton is, oh my gosh, he was doing, oh goodness, he's trying to book, he's trying to make some coffee, but it looks like he, oh, Sergeant Hinton, oh my gosh, I gotta take care of this. Everyone, thank you so much. We hope to see you again. God bless. Uh, see you soon.